Hello, this is Everett Pierce with Einstein 314, January the 29th, 2017, and it's 2.41 p.m. Arizona time. This is part two of the Tree of Love. The Tree of Love. Now, as we all know, we have labels or names. Now, what name would I give my girlfriend, being that I... I'm the only man on this planet, and it's just me and my girlfriend. The tree of knowledge. Now, from a distance in observation, because I took the time to get to know her, and I say she leans. And say, oh, how about I just call her Eileen, which is a name, a female name. Eileen. Now, <laughs> as we all have you know, I would think most of us have watched the movies, the movie called Fifty Shades of Grey, in terms of sex and sexuality and pain. I mean, there are many avenues in which you can go into. Okay, now if I'm going to view it from that perspective with Eileen here, <coughs> now I could, you know, understand that I'm in a pain. Now, I'm not much of a pain type person, but I also appreciate and understand the value of it. I mean, if I go up here and I just do a, this is her ass, and I just give you a quick slap on the ass. Now, as we know with this tree, you say, well, did you hurt the tree? No, I would hardly think so. I probably hurt more my hand than I, I did with Eileen. Now, I could get rough with her and everything else, and she, this tree might see it as foreplay. It might really get her turned on. Her leaves are just a rustling. <laughs> but if she was to do that in return let me tell you her branches could put a good hurting on me now I could probably tolerate maybe one time well it depends on how good the sex is <laughs> no I'm just joking but meaning that she could deliver more pain to me than I'm accustomed to or willing or wanting to to experience so it's just like your lover your girlfriend, your wife, or what, whoever or whatever label you want to place upon her. It's, in, it's critical to understand her to her fullest. Because you may have a wife that you've been married to for 20 years. And then find out that you know your relationship has gone stale. And all she wanted you is to slap her on the ass every once in a while. Make her feel like she's alive and that you care about her. But you didn't take the extent of understanding that element of her personality because she's trying to fit the image of a PTA mother of her children. Okay, anyways, that's just a, a parable. It's a partial truism, too. So, in the reality of it, obviously I cannot have sex with a tree. You know, so we couldn't make baby trees or we couldn't make baby Everett's. But, as we know, in terms of the fantas fantasizing, I mean, we can fantasize in our heads a vision. So I could take Eileen and put her in the physical sense of things and what I would do to her. You know, mind, body, and spirit. Okay, because I definitely, if she wanted to insert her Fifty Shades of Brown... I don't know how much of that I could take, but she's got a lot of branches here. A lot of branches. So, now it comes down to, I can, I can withstand up to a certain point, and then, especially if those bran branches break my skin, then I could oppose a problem, because if it's just me and her, and there's no hospitals, you know, no ambulance to charge me $3,000 to take me six blocks away, is... I have to be smart about it so our encounter, our sexual encounter don't end up being like a black widow where the black widow female kills the male. <laughs> and believe me, if I was to have a sex with a tree and, and all those limbs up there, boy, she could put a whoop into my butt. And it's like probably more than what I could put up with. Well, actually, I could put up with a lot. That's uh, me being modest. But still, you have to have a mixture of them both. You know, and even if, like, a, in terms of pain. Now, everyone's on a different perspective of things. 
But you know the two elements must exist. Positive and negative. That's how you have electricity. So I know at some point I have to quickly, just like putting a little bit of dash of salt on your food, an element of pain. It doesn't have to be crucial or hard or severe. It just, if nothing else, is for the thoughts in one's mind to make it present, to make it come into life, per se. So, so the tree of knowledge. And you thought, he was like, no, not the tree of knowledge. And say, no, okay, well, we got the tree of love. We can put anything after the tree of. The tree of life. The tree of knowledge. The tree of government. So you can pretty much put any element after of. And you can use your objective and creative mind to abstract, expand, and contract. Well, that's essentially what's done in the act of sex. Procreating. And of course, there are some other words that is used among many people. So we'll try to keep this PG. But with Eileen here, and in my only source of communication and contact of life, is so there are other avenues that we can go in so in terms of affection women complain about not having enough affection or another in their terminology is foreplay so foreplay could be just simply is touching no and then you can explain you know the tree of foreplay and i'm sure the women now are probably listening yeah yeah write a book on it everett the tree of foreplay please for the love of god yeah, <laughs> the tree of foreplay is we have a stem here. If I can get a rope and I just happen to find a tire, I can hang as we've seen uh, past a man's timeline. And then we have a hanging tire here. Well, and say, well, technically, well, if it's just you and the tree, then technically the tire hasn't been created yet. Well, I could find something and at least the rope I can... I can use something to, I can braid something like a rope, and I can hang from it. And say, hanging. Well, it's like, men love that word. Yo, baby, it's a hanging good. <laughs> so, the way we use our words is being seductive. And the way, you the way I talk to Eileen, and how I approach Eileen, and how I observe Eileen. So, so it's more than, you know, the tree of love. You can extract enough, you know, as I say, if I show you a quarter, and I show you the heads, means George Washington, and you are familiar with that coin, do I need to show you the reverse side of that? No. So, as long as there's enough information there, using your objective and creative mind, you can put in things that will fall in the category of we hold these truths to be self-evident. Because just your logic and reasoning would be able to sort it out like a piece to the puzzle. So, the tree of love. And you say the tree of life. So there are many descriptive values that you can put associated with the tree is now this tree to me now I could give this tree many names and the trees she's probably telling me I don't care what the hell you call me just never call me late for dinner mister meaning that you better have me a bucket of water <laughs> so so hopefully you're laughing with me and enjoying the insight to how this creative and objective mind works and how I have been so successful in my accomplishments. And, you know, and they, when someone holds up the King James Bible or the, or the Quran or, you know, whatever spiritual book out there. And they say, this is the word of God. And you say, you said it correctly. And a key element is word, singular. Because the whole book of God is all around us. 
and we're just establishing the initial, the introductory, using a tree. So in the, in the beginning of Genesis, in the middle of the garden, okay, so the, the Garden of Eden. Where is the Garden of Eden? It's called North and South America. So where is the place that would be where the tree is? That would be Iowa. Okay, you say, well, how do you know? You, do you have proof on it? Well, other than taking you back in time, or you can just listen to how I teach things and that you are put in a corner of how could I not believe who he is? How can I not believe what he's saying because I come up with the same results? And why would I say North and South America is the Garden of Eden? And why Iowa is the place of the tree. But as we know with the North and South America, trees grow everywhere. We have a lot of trees. So it just happened to be that in this lifetime, that's where I come utilizing the element of evolution called reincarnation. And just like trees, reincarnation, the symbolism of reincarnation. It drops its leaves, it goes through the cycle, and then, once it's finished with the cycle, then it, it brings about new growth again. So, the tree of reincarnation, the tree of knowledge, the tree of love. And as we all know, it was like, as soon as we talk about love and sex and sexuality, it was like, it was interesting on, on YouTube, it's like, you get someone picking his nose and he's got 12 million views, and yet you get my video, and I'd be lucky to get 12. And it, it just, well, I mean, I got, I think I, about 300,000, you know, views on, on my YouTube. But the point is, people have different perspective of things. So, and just like this tree, like we see with women, you know, I, I'm a different life form. She's a different life form. I mean, I'm, of course, there's a symbolism, meaning that. It was like, I joke with people, but there, it's also partial truths. I mean, there's truism. And I say, well, you know, in terms of a nymphomaniac, and say, well, I would make a nymph nymphomaniac seem like the Pope. And a lot of respects to my understanding of sex and sexuality and, uh, and appreciation for women. Oh, that is so true. <laughs> because the nymphomaniacs are, they're only into just one strong aspect of sexuality. I mean, just raw sex. Sex, 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 sex. Well, I like that. But that's not the only thing about sexuality. And connection. And appreciation for another life form. Like we're demonstrating here with a tree. And say, oh, Everett's having sex with a tree. Let's lock him up, put a white jacket on him. Holy cow, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But when you stop and think about it, if I truly was the only man, and this was the only tree, there is no vegetation whatsoever, how I would be educate, I can educate myself, self-taught. And a lot of things that I am self-taught. And if it's not from myself, but from God himself, the highest form of evolution. So when we look at the things in our environment, we see different levels of evolution, life. So, you know, if you see the smallest part of it, you know there's got to be something far bigger. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, so we'll cut this on this part two of the tree of love. It's like when we talk about love and sexuality and sex and boobs and butts, and it's like now you got people's, you know, interest. What? Hey, you talk about sex? Oh, 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 I might know a few things about that. Really? <laughs> well, then you don't want to hear what I know because now you look pathetic in your efforts to knowing about sex and sexuality. That's why a lot of people run away from me because uh, of the contrast that I put there. Not that I'm trying to belittle people, but that's the automatic, you know, if there's a, as they say, the, the side effect. The side effect of a huge gap between evolution 
would be that. And now you have to resolve an issue. Is the person that is on the lower level of evolution. Is that they're not up in their feelings. Feeling like they're less than. Or the fact, you know, the term. I think therefore I am. Tells you you're here. For a very special reason. Because energy that is substandard just does not exist. So. And I would say for the size of this tree i got me a decent woman <laughs> so and with this limb right here i tie a, a rope to it and if i was to find a tire oh i could do a lot of swinging off this tree so she's strong enough so in terms of women i mean that's one of the problems that that women find themselves in whether they've done it voluntary or involuntary and the things that men do towards women is they treat women as if they're fragile. And I'm here to say women are not fragile. They're far from fragile. And say, so I'm just a little female. I Don't break my heart, please, for the love of God. And say, like, no. <laughs> That's called an illusion, people. So I don't pick on just one particular gender. So just like this tree, uh, there's no fragileness, you know, now, if a big gust of wind at, you know, 300 miles an hour, you know, we're only as, you know, is, it may be strong up to a point of, of other exterior things that can affect other energy. Energy is always affecting other energies. It's called laws of attraction. But when one energy affects the other, it's called energy cause, cause and effect cause and effect for every action there's a reaction so if you're going to be forever life then you know forever death is in there it is known as extinction and what is depicted as the devil I mean this gruesome devilish dead thing and so that's the label you would put on now Lucifer which is depicted in the books as being a beautiful angel so if people got Jesus wrong you know they got Lucifer wrong but so if you're gonna be forever life there are certain things that you have to do it means your job it means there's certain things for us to to coexist we have to do things in a smart way we have to st understand each other so we'll end it right there I just wanted to introduce you to my tree that I call Eileen and she's a wealth of knowledge. And I just, you know, I tell her to take it easy on me. Because your 50 shades of, of brown is, can, can be overwhelming. <laughs> so hopefully you're laughing with me. But there is so much just out of the symbolism of the tree that we can gather. So the book of God. You know, well, you get a lot of people want that victim role. And they say, well, I don't have a book of life. I don't have this. And it's just, oh, oh everything is so uh, stacked up against me. And really, well, it doesn't cost any money to walk down a street. It doesn't cost any money to go to a park. It doesn't cost, well, eventually you have to eat. But it takes several days without eating before you die. So you're going to have enough time in your power of observation to start abstracting and viewing the true Word of God. And I say plural. Words. Word to the mother. <laughs> words of God. And it's all around you. How can you mean, stop and think about it in terms of evolution? How could you contain God's Word, the highest level of evolution, into a book that would fit in your hand. That book would be so big and so huge, you couldn't even pick it up. You'd have to have a crane to pick it up. Of all the information that would be part of that book, and just a chapter on human anatomy, the human race would be, it would be bigger than this house. So we'll end it right there. This is part two of the Tree of Love. And with that, thank you for your time and Godspeed.